we don't need this. No, we don't need it. Yeah, yeah. Walk in 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 yeah. We have right, team so we'll give you an update. There's only three here. The mayor, Captain Bridges, and Dave Hikes from ATF. The mayor, the trust was going to speak first. And then probably Captain Bridges or Hikes. Yeah, that's going to be a press conference. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. I only saw one. I'll try one more time. I'll speak later. I'll keep this under 10 minutes. They're going to come in for an indoor. Okay. Thank you, sir. Will you text the desk and see what he wanted? He's trying to with me. Oh, he's probably saying. Oh, I guess where this where is located is. There's not one around here. I, mean, I can turn around. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's no, not that's not that's not strong enough in here. Really? Yeah. If I Wi-Fi's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a hole. Oh, yes. Safe hole. Mm -hmm. Safe. Little one, nobody. There's only one TV you have. It's the four FPC. There's probably the DS. There's probably the nails. Okay, uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a good and a bad day in the city of Trussell. It's a good day that uh, we have come to an end of an investigation that started last Wednesday at one of our elementary schools. Uh, it's a bad day in a sense that we had someone to come into our community and uh, try to uh, uh, cause problems not only within our community but also be destructive and potentially uh, harmful to some of our local police officers. I will say that I don't think any of this uh, pertained to the safety. It did pertain to the safety of the children, but I think the children were used as a decoy. Uh, I'm going to let Captain Bridges explain all that, but uh, the, the work that was done between our local enforcement officers, the ATF department that's here, Sheriff's Department was just magnificent. We've all rehearsed, reviewed and rehearsed what uh, happened and, and been through the steps, and we're all satisfied with what was done. I can't be more thankful to our local authorities and those that cooperated and the press that is here, we thank you for being here today to cover this for you. I'm gonna turn this over to Captain Bridges, let him kind of tell us kind of what has happened since last Wednesday when this all occurred. So, Jeff. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Jeff Bridges. Um, I wanna thank David Heitch, the, the uh, ATF, Brian Vessels. We worked uh, a lot of hours with Trustful PD and with the uh, Metro Area Crime Center to uh, bring these children <coughs> to, uh, to justice hopefully soon, Zachary Edwards and uh, Rappel Dillgard, I believe that's pronounced correctly. She's a 34-year-old female, and he is a 35-year-old male. They both live together. They have a dating relationship uh, in the East Lake area, live in Birmingham. The, um, as you know from the the incident that happened last week with the bomb threat uh, that was called into 911, ATF along with Trustful PD and Mac traced the number back and it led to Mr. Edwards' tireless efforts, search warrants, uh, just good police work investigating. They all worked together to put this uh, in front of these, these suspects and they have uh, admitted to their wrongdoing and they have, both have three warrants apiece. I believe it's uh, possession of a hoax device, rendering a false alarm and terrorist threats. I believe Mr. Edwards is set at a $60,000 bond and the female is at a $10,000 bond. I'll answer any questions that I can. Why is there a difference in the bond, sir? He has a, a more extensive record than she does. And what does that record include? Uh, I don't have that in front of me. Can you talk about the scenario? I think I read somewhere uh, that he might have claimed to have been a member of a certain organization. He just kind of expand on that and bring it all together. He made some statements while being interviewed that he was affiliated some way with the Black Panthers and the Black Mafia, and that uh, he was using this as a diversion to get cops in one area to shoot them, and also as a diversion to possibly commit a bank robbery. So I guess there's some discrepancy there. It wasn't an either or thing. He was saying he was gonna to try to do both things, gather police officers at this school for the purpose of shooting them, 
and then somehow he or some associate was going to rob the bank during this division? He, he states he has some associates and he had more plans for the future. So I know you guys believe he was a member of the group? I have, no, I have no idea. Okay, so he has not admitted to being in the group? He stated he was affiliated with those two groups. I don't know what you have to do to actually join that. And as, as for gunpowder at this original site, was that a correct report or was this just a hoax device altogether? Can, I def can you give me the following questions at the end and I'm going to refer those to David. All right. He's a, an expert on it, I'm not. Talk about the vulnerabilities. Uh, law enforcement, you guys are just going through so much right now. It seems like in the media there's always someone ambushing this person, that person. Talk about the vulnerabilities that you guys have going on right now. Yeah, they, uh, all the officers, I think, feel that with what's going on nationwide. Uh, it's a shame it's, it's, it's come to that, but it is what it is. We'll keep doing what we're supposed to do. Is it your sense that this is a deranged individual who's just spouting off, or do you have every reason to believe that this was dead serious? I believe it's serious. And what might have been the consequences? Uh, meaning, had he decided to start shooting at us? Yes. Well, it's pretty obvious there would be grave if he had decided to do that. We took, at the instant that, excuse me, at the instant it happened, and the school resource officer found the, the package, which uh, had the timer on it, which got our, uh, our interest up, we immediately deployed officers to the, uh, the hill behind the school and the surrounding areas, started thinking it could possibly be a hoax, it being in the wide open like it was. Um, the officers that were not tied up at the time, we sent to the banks and the high profile areas, the jewelry stores, thinking that it could possibly be a diversion. And during the, the Mr. Edwards statement, he said uh, he did go to a local bank, but there was a police car present there and he opted not to rob it directly after this call. Were they the ones that actually made the 911 call? He made the 911 call disguising his voice to sound like a female. Hmm. What was the woman's role in it? She purchased the components I don't know if there's anything more than that. But she, was, she was aware of what was going on. And you, you have surveillance video of that? I do. Okay. And, and where was that transaction made? I know Walmart and Irondale, and I don't know if there's more or not. I don't. Can we get a copy of the surveillance? I don't have it right now. but. And the suspects are where right now, sir? In Trussellville. And will they be transported at some time? They will today. To where? Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. What did you guys learn from this? You know, no, no traffic stop is routine. Most calls are not similar. What did you guys learn from this? Even though it was a hoax, what, what did you guys learn? Um, well, just, just like that, it's, it's, nothing's routine. Anything can happen. A normal day can turn into a, a, a lot worse day. We're very fortunate that it didn't turn that way here. Close, close cooperation with, uh, with the ATF and with Mac and with the sheriff's office and their bomb squad made this go a lot smoother um, and we were fortunate enough to put this together and put someone in jail for it. Were they arrested today? Uh, yes. Like well, this morning? Well, they were, they were actually they were actually locked up late last night and uh, the warrants were signed this morning and that's when I, I let this uh, become public. Mm -hmm. After the DA looked at it, reviewed it, and made sure we're all on the same. We did y'all, what was it like taking them in? Did they, did they put up a fight about it or? No. Did you fight at their home? Pardon me? Did, were they at their home or? We'll refer that to David as well. Chief, uh, your thoughts on, oh, I'm sorry, Captain, your thoughts on this plan being thought out at an elementary school, if this plan would have gone according to plans, kids would have been involved and possibly saw all of this going on. Can you repeat the question? Your, your, just your thoughts, being a police officer, this plan being thought out, being used at, as an elementary school, and kids possibly being around to see all of this. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it always seems to be a little bit worse if the children are involved. It wasn't that long ago that Sandy Hook, that, that tragedy took place, so it, it does get a lot more attention. Uh, and maybe that's what these uh, defendants were thinking. If you, you do something that scares everyone at a school, They'll, they'll get more uh, more attention, more publicity. 
and more police officers on the scene. And I know you said they admitted to whatever. Were they remorseful? Were they like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know the answer to that. I was not present for that. The detectives and the ATF did the, that work. But as far as the confession, uh, both, you say, have admitted to their respective roles in this. That, that's correct. And forgive me, I guess, what, what is the penalty now when you stack up all these charges, the hoax bombing, the terrorist threats, whatever? What, what, what is the possible prison term these people face? I don't know that. Two felonies, one misdemeanor for each. And I don't know what the uh, what jail time that they could or could not be looking at. I don't know the answer. He stated that he had associates. Are you guys worried about any associates at this time? We're going to continue investigating. And looking into every everything else, so I don't know that worry is a good good word, but yeah, we're gonna keep looking into it. I'm, I'm gonna refer to David if that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. mm -hmm. Hi, I'm David Heitch, H Y C H E. I'm the assistant special agent in charge for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives for the Nashville Field Division. Division covering the state of Alabama. If you before before you ask any questions, I want to point something out to you as well. I've been involved with a lot of uh, hoax devices and suspect packages at, at schools. I've worked in three major cities in the U.S. for the last 28 years, and the response by the police department and the SRO, the school resource officer who responded to this, the school, the uh, Jefferson County Bomb Squad, the FBI, our folks. I've never seen this well orchestrated and rapid a response and a lot of times these things are not taken very seriously but let me tell you this when the and I'm, I'm assuming but when the SRO sold the thing it looks like a real bomb I am hesitant to call it a hoax device because it did contain what I believe to be smokeless powder and explosive so it's very unusual and my agency and trustful and the state fire marshals and the Aaliyah bomb squad and everybody else treated this like this was a school with our kids. Nobody was playing around. This was worked on every night, all weekend long. And the response was uh, as large as it could have been. And I want the, the people to understand that, that we all took this extremely seriously. And I don't like the word hoax. Just because a, uh, an IED may not be constructed where it would work, most everything you needed to make a bomb work was in this particular device. Now, the kids were not in any danger from this item. It was a distance from the school, and the side of the school that it was on had no glass other than one uh, door, and it was not a large amount of explosives, but when we first saw what we had, and we talked to our partners with Trustful and the other agencies, we all knew that this is something we have to take seriously and just put the full court press on it and get these people locked up as quick as possible. Uh, we're also looking into the possibility of federal prosecution for these two individuals. None of that matters, though, while the work's being done. We all just work together, whether it's a state case or a federal case, nobody cared. And everybody came together and worked it as a team, and it was a fantastic investigative effort, and I want to commend everybody involved. Yes, sir, if you can describe, since you talk so much about the device, can you give us an idea now that all of that part is over? What were you dealing with? Was this a small box, big box, little box? powders, liquids, just paint a picture of exactly what was the focus. Well, I, I don't want to get into speculation because there potentially could be a, a trial, there could be court proceedings in this, but the device was constructed to look like a bomb and it had many of the necessary components. Uh, I don't know why someone would choose to put an actual explosive in an item if they were making a hoax device. Now there was not a great deal of explosives, like I said before. Uh, but let me tell you, we took it seriously enough for a whole bunch of grown men to crawl around on their hands and knees in that parking lot and up and down that hillside and, and uh, got a good workout for our dog. And I think we found absolutely everything. We cleaned up the construction site out there pretty good for trust. <laughs> but uh, we were able to put the whole thing back together and we're real confident with what we had, but it disturbed us from the start. It's all about taking a man and woman into custody. Well, you, obviously, you guys say they admitted, but where did you get them? How did it go down? Explain that for 
I don't have all the specifics other than they were just placed under arrest at their residence. Uh, in, it really not a spectacular story there. Um, I was not briefed on anything by my guys or, or the trustful folks, unusual. So, I mean, we arrest people every day. So it's, it, it was not a... But the discussion came after they were in custody. They When did the confession come in relation yeah. to when they were taken in? Well, they were interviewed. They were, there were extensive interviews done, as you could imagine, with something that we take this seriously. And as we're speaking now, investigation is going on. Uh, there are some, some uh, things that were said in the interviews that are disturbing to all of us. And we're not stopping. None of us uh, trustful us. We're all working it together, and it continues. So and this, oh, my you know, no, the initial goal was to, to get these people yeah. off the street. Now, if we find anybody else involved, I promise you there won't be a stone unturned. We'll, we'll, uh, if, if there's anybody else involved or any anything else going on, we'll find out and we'll get those people too. Well, which begs the question: if he's confessing and they're both confessing, is part of the confession real names of real people who might still be out there wanting to do harm to, to citizens here? You know that may have been verified while you and I are talking right now. I don't have that information, but that work's being done right now. You mentioned it had gunpowder in there, the device, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But was could this have gone off? I mean, yeah. you know, there was no chance it could have gone no. off, right? Okay. Yeah, there was no chance it could have gone off. When we first see something like that, we think, is this somebody who just doesn't know what they're doing, but they're trying to make a bomb, or somebody who's <laughs> clearly trying to make a distraction or a hoax? And as the captain said, this we, we believe, and, and uh, we think we've confirmed that it was more designed as a hoax device. Why would someone, I mean, I'm just curious. You're looking at it, so you had somebody who was not competent enough to make one, or they specifically did it as a hoax? No, that, that's what I don't know. That's when, when we first looked at it, that's what I thought. I'm, I'm giving you my thoughts. That's not a fact. That's my thoughts. When we look at the device and we see the components there, we think, not in just in this case, in any case, if we have a, an IED that could not function, is this somebody who's trying to make one and next time they're going to get it right? We don't think so. We think this was deliberately made to look like a bomb. Now, if you're a parent of a child at Magnolia Elementary School, uh, we have a holiday here now, so it's mm -hmm. a mood over the next couple of days. But what do you want to tell folks who are petrified about a story and it doesn't contain real gunpowder, whether it was a hoax or not? What do you want to tell the parents of children as of Monday morning? Well, one thing I want to make sure that we all get across is that this was a difficult investigation that was forensic in nature, and for it to be cleared so fast is remarkable, and it again attests to these agencies that work this case together, and the fact that we've arrested those responsible rapidly. Um, I mean, that same day may not have been rapid enough. If it, this was my school with my child in it, I understand. I understand the fear, but... Uh, the best I can tell you is everybody is doing everything they can to make their, uh, the school safe, and I believe the school is safe. And the fact, that, the, the fact that such a full court press was put on this from the start is just a testament to law enforcement in our metropolitan area here. I guess the question, though, would be that if in the intervening two or three days now you have reason to believe that there might be associates out there, how quickly will you notify the public so parents would have the choice to say, listen, I'll wait until Joe or Sally or whoever else might be out there is apprehended? Well, we haven't confirmed anything yet that has been said. Now, we're not discounting it, kind of like, you know, the hoax device. We still work. We still work the case. If we find information that needs to be passed on to the public, I can assure you it will be, and I, I think I speak for Trustful as well. If we had information like that now, you would get it. We're not going to hold back on something. And we gave information out early in this investigation that normally we probably wouldn't have, but because of the circumstances, we wanted people to be more comfortable. Agent Hodge, at least one media source is reporting that the suspect wanted to start a race war. Can you confirm that? I don't have that information. I know that during the interview, and that I'm not saying whether that was said or not. I don't know. I wasn't present during the interviews. But the information I have was that they wanted to, they intended to shoot at police, and then the two organizations the individual claimed to be a part of. I guess that could be something somebody could surmise, but I don't have that direct information. What federal charges might they be facing? Felon with a firearm for the male individual. Um, 
there is a federal hope statute, but um, what we will do is we'll look at the prosecution for both state and federal, and I think um, Trustful would agree. We don't care whichever's the best and serves the community best is fine with us. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you.